All right, Lindsay. They won two out of three, which you said was the goal. And they beat Texas Tech, which you said if they just beat a Texas Tech, it'd be a win. So dropped the first one to Oklahoma. They couldn't get a run across home plate. But then uh, they turned it around, had a really impressive pitching performance from your guy on Saturday, and then they blew Kansas State out of the water. So where do you want to start? Uh, start with Friday. I mean, yeah. play in Oklahoma. One, it's a morning game. You just always feel weird about that. It's like it's those 11, 11 a.m. kicks in baseball form. But, yeah. um, you know, Thomas Sheehan goes out. We were excited he was getting the start. Goes one inning. From what I've been told, no injury concerns. It's just his first game back from a partial Tommy John procedure, and he had a stressful inning. Two guys get on base. He's trying to work through that. Uh, Jordan Armstrong comes on in relief. Juco transfer from, I believe, Chattahoochee Valley Community College right up the road. Yes. Uh, pitch is fantastic. Four innings um, of, of shutout ball. And and the problem is we just can't get any sort of offense outside of uh, our thick king, Sonny Dacharya. He's a big boy. Sonny, he is a big boy. Sonny hits two two doubles, uh, two two deep doubles, um, but we just can't get anything else. We end up three total hits, lose the game three nothing. Oklahoma breaks it loose with a with a two run home run off of Hayden Mullins in the seventh, and adds an insurance run in the eighth. Just right. um, seven total hits in the entire game. So defensive battle on both sides, um, and you expect to see pitchers ahead of hitters at this point in time in the season. So you get it. Um, like I said, good good performance. Um, as far as pitching goes from Jordan Armstrong, you have to feel good about about his future as far as an option in the rotation. And then Tommy Sheehan looked good in the one inning he had. Would you say that Armstrong had a strong arm? He did. Yes. What he, a great pitching man. What a it's it's it. The only way it would be better is if your name was Arm Barnett. <laughs> That's fair. It's a call back to the ba- the baseball playoffs. Can't use bullpen. Peter says you can't use bullpen. It's an arm barn. Arm barn. I, I like that better anyway. Game two go. against Tech was the highlight of the weekend. Um, I mean, what a showing. Joseph Gonzalez, my guy. And and people who have listened to the show for a while know I have been talking for a year now. Joseph Gonzalez is my version of your Roger McCreary and Noah Igabinagani. Like right. I have been saying for a year, this is a good kid. He knows what he's doing. He goes five innings, three hits, five strikeouts. Uh, looks fantastic. Slider looks better. Um, fastball was on. He's mixing them up really well. And he, the thing that I love is defense, like reigning Big 12 Player of the Year, Jace Young at second base. Uh, Butch Thompson on Tuesday's press conference called him one of the best players in college baseball. Kid goes 0 for 4, three strikeouts. Wow. Auburn attacks him. Auburn's not afraid. Uh, they get some timely hitting. They get a, um, a new starter, Cole Foster, at second base. Gets a RBI single in the second. And then um, Kaysen Howell has a, has a sack fly in the fourth. We win the game 2-1. to one. So th- still only three hits. Not a ton of hits, but the pitching shows up where you need it. And the, from a guy you need it from. Yeah, yeah, and that was huge. That was huge. And then K-State, I mean, it seems like everybody scored. <laughs> 12-1. to 1, um, The only reason everybody didn't score is because we put a lot of backups in. We rotated a lot of guys in. Um, sure. a, a lot of the lineup regulars, shout out to Blake Rambush. Blake Rambush played three games this weekend, started two different positions, and uh, just happened to go three for five with four runs scored today or on Sunday. So yeah. had a great weekend. I am going to... Like, sorry, let me positive first. Trace Bright yes. looked really good. He's a guy started the year off really good last year, started to struggle when he got to his second time through the rotation, uh, through the lineup, and gave up a lot of crooked numbers. Went five innings, two hits, one run. It was unearned, five strikeouts, only two walks. It was one of the more impressive performances I'd seen from an Auburn pitcher recently. And pretty much it was a sequencing masterclass. He's mixing in a fastball. He's mixing in a, a changeup. He's mixing in a slider. Uh, he's 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 going side to side on the plate. He's throwing it for strikes on both sides of the plate. He's going high to low, making the batters change their eye level. Uh, really good job. Shows a lot of growth on his part. Yeah. You feel really good. If he's your Sunday starter, you feel really good about as long as this continues, you're going to have a good chance to take a third game and win a lot of series. Um, 
once conference play starts in a couple weeks. But I will, everybody sees 13 to 1 and they're like, oh man, Auburn, or 12 to 1. Auburn just, the bats came alive. Auburn did a bunch. 13 yeah. hits, but five RBIs were scored by Auburn batters hit by a pitch when the bases were loaded. Auburn had the bases loaded four separate times in this game. Uh, so the, like, the observation is the, the numbers, the offensive numbers look good. The offense is still not where we want it to be. Okay. Uh, they did make some lineup changes. So you did see Nate LaRue in for the first time. You saw Brayton Brown in for the first time this whole series, this whole season. Uh, they accounted for our first four runs and I believe a total of five RBIs together. Uh, but there is still mixing and matching being done. We still don't quite know exactly who all of our power hitters are, with the exception of Thick King Sonny. Sonny <laughs> hit three balls this weekend that would be a home run in just about any SEC ballpark. Yeah. Um, Auburn had, I think, five total that would have been home runs anywhere. But he, Sonny hit two on Friday. He hit one today that would have been a home run in any ballpark in the SEC, but were not a home run in Globe Life Field in Arlington. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, very good performance from the pitching staff. Good enough from the offensive staff, but uh, b- but I do want to see more consistency and more timely hitting from Auburn going forward as we make our way to conference play in two weeks. So there's a lot of questions still about this baseball team, and not a whole lot of people are high on this baseball team going into the season. Did we see enough this weekend to say, okay, you know, maybe maybe this team can outperform um, where a lot of people are predicting to finish, which is close to the bottom of the SEC. So the questions around this team, two of the three questions were about pitching. It was, could your starting pitching hold up? And then could you, as Butch said himself, could you pass the baton to the bullpen? So starting pitching allowed, I believe, seven run, uh, seven hits all weekend. Okay. Starting pitching held up. Uh, you saw a close game on on Saturday. You saw Blake Burkhalter come in, do a, two, a six a six out two inning save for the eighth and the ninth. Uh, you saw them pass the baton from the starter through the bullpen to the closer and him go through. You've partially answered that. The only essentially question that you still have to answer is offensively: How are you replacing the ty- the the power of Short King Ryan Bliss and of right. Tyler Miller? Uh, we. Pretty confident Sonny's going to have some of that power. Where else is it going to come from? Um, and we did see Auburn do some other things to manufacture runs. We saw a steal of home, which if you haven't seen somebody steal home, that's exciting. That's fun to watch. Right. Uh, we saw some hits, a hit and run. We saw some steals. We saw some drag bunts. So we saw Auburn manufacturing some offense. I just want to see where the power is going to go to answer that third question. But I think that the team played better than worst team in the West. Have to be happy about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Just a second. This isn't Auburn baseball related, but it has to do with what happened this weekend. Flow baseball is terrible. They're not great. Um, My favorite, the the, the encapsulation of that for me was there was a play today. I want to say it was the sixth inning where Auburn gets an RBI grounder second. And they throw the runner out at first, runner on third scores. And you can't necessarily tell, like first baseman's falling off the bag as, as he's fielding the play. And you can't tell if he tag if his foot is on the bag or not. So Flow Baseball helpfully gives us a minute of a steady cam focused on the umpires while they're looking at a screen facing away from us until they announce that he was in fact out. Once he was out, they then show us a perfect replay of exactly what happened, where you can clearly see he caught the ball with his foot on the bag. And I'm like, why didn't you just show us that? Why do I have to look at a guy looking at a TV screen when I could have seen that and not wondered about, were you trying to manufacture drama? Is this TNT now? Unreal. And then like you see Auburn baseball sharing highlights as they do from any broadcast with any sport. Um, But it's like in like 20 frames per second. (laughs) It's like... Happening. It's like, is my internet off? Like, what's going on? And it's $30 a month with yeah. no trial. They're charging a premium, man. They they were charging a premium for a subpar product. No question. I have watched minor league baseball broadcasts that were better than that. I believe it. I mean, that is a low bar that was set for $30 a month. 
when you look at like Netflix and Hulu and ESPN, they're charging like around 10. It's like, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but whatever. It's done. That is behind us now. We are pretty much SEC Network Plus the rest of the way, and that is all right. That is okay. And there's uh, a few games that aren't televised. and if, the, the ones that are not, you can check them out. Coverage of all of them at Auburn Daily, as well as I'll probably be there live tweeting um, on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. Just follow me and you'll get all your updates. Boom. What a plug. What a plug by Lindsey Crosby right there. Yeah, they start uh, their season uh, opener at home will be Wednesday against Troy. I think it's at five. So Wednesday, Wednesday against Troy at five. I will be there. 